All right, greetings YouTube. This is Dean from Board Game Social bringing you an interview today with uh, designer Nick Yankowski. His upcoming Kickstarter project is called Full Throttle Air Racing. Uh, should be starting in a few weeks, I believe. I had a chance to interview him at CincyCon 2015. Uh, take a look at it. We also talked with the winners of his tournament that he was hosting there uh, that was uh, showing off his game. So, hope you enjoy it, and then stick around for my closing uh, thoughts at the end of the video. Thank you very much. All right, so I'm joined with uh, joined by Nick Yankowski with Air Throttle Full Racing Game, a game in design, soon to be coming out. Uh, it's a Kickstarter. Uh, Nick, why don't you tell us a little bit about the game, the design premise behind it, and what separates this game from the other air racing games out there? Well, this is a, a very simple, easy to play game. Uh, I look at it as a family game, uh, something that is uh, playable by anyone from about 10 to adult. Um, through the play testing that we've done with the with the product, uh, we have. Uh, people who have enjoyed this game everywhere from about that age of 10 all the way into their 60s. It's a good uh, a good easy game to learn. It takes about three or four minutes to learn. A nice mix of, uh, of strategy and luck. Uh, and uh, when the game is complete, all the components will be part of the, uh, the original packaging. Okay, so of the uh, what we're seeing out here, is this, uh, are these prototype proponents or is this pretty much what the final product is going to look like? Some of these, pro uh, some of these pieces are prototype Things like the pylons or prototype, we're still working on a little cleaner design. The airplane, the air racers themselves, that will be, uh, the way things look right now, that'll be the, the final product. Um, these are simply a movement stand with an altitude disc and then a plastic airplane uh, that looks like a P-51 on top of it. Uh, the uh, full throttle uh, uh, gauge is also a prototype. Uh, we'll come up with a little cleaner design for that. Okay, I noticed you know, you've been running demos throughout CincyCon 2015. Seems like you've had a lot of foot traffic, people coming in. Any general feedback? It seems like people are enjoying it. It, it looks definitely like a nice social interactive game. So what kind of separates it from some of the other air games that are out there? Um, well, the one thing is that it is a racing game. There aren't really a lot of other rare racing games. There's other types of racing. Uh, what makes it a little more interesting is because it's an air game, there is a three-dimensional aspect to it. You're, you can move your airplane through both time and space, vertically, horizontally. Um, and as a result of that, it kind of adds, adds a little different edge to it. Uh, there could be a little bit of strategy because you aren't allowed to move through another aircraft that's at the same level as you, so you can block people, make them move around you, make them use up their, their forward momentum to get past you. Um, other than that, yes, it is a very social game. Everybody seems to have a pretty good time. There's enough strategy to it and enough luck to it that it's a good balance. Uh, so you can take it seriously, but not too seriously. So it's kind of a combination of I want to win, but I also have to potentially block someone out. So there's that kind of take that sort of mechanic in it. Yeah, she's eight. Seven. Oh, you're, you're six. You're a six, weren't you? No, I'm a one. Okay, I'm a six. All right. One. Damn it, And while it's it's uh, designed on a World War II aircraft, this is not a, a fighting game. It's not a war game. It's strictly a racing game. Is that correct? Correct. Yes, it's strictly a racing game. The reason we picked the P-51 as the as the initial uh, aircraft for this game is simply because that is one of the planes that represent most of the modern air racers that are out there. Uh, if you if you have an opportunity to watch an air race that's that's going on currently. Um, they're, most of the planes are P-51s, there are a couple of other special models. Those are real fast planes from the end of the war that are propeller driven. Okay, so you said you can learn it in about three to four, three to five minutes, so why don't you uh, walk us through how to, how to play this game? Okay, very simply what you start with is you have um, a, one of your plastic airplanes with the uh, flight base on it. The flight base is numbered zero through seven. In reality there are seven different altitude levels. Zero is if you're at zero you have landed. Um, so you can move up and down through the, that scale of altitude levels as you're moving. Simply what you do is to start the game, you're going to place your aircraft on one of the start positions. It'll tell you what altitude to start at. And then uh, through the course of the game, you'll be drawing cards. The cards will, uh, will tell you how far to move. Cards are 
either a four, five, or a six. So four, whoops, four, five, or six. So if you draw a four, you're going to move four hexes. Five would be five hexes. Six would be, of course, six hexes. The way that the game works is you simply draw your card. You're going to move your aircraft that number of spaces. If you choose to dive or to climb, that will affect how far you can go. And of course, the name of the game is Full Throttle, so you would use your Full Throttle game, and at any point in your movement, you would have the opportunity to go Full Throttle, which would increase your speed as the game progresses, starting out with one additional hex and so on. As you use your Full Throttle consecutively, there's a chance that you may, may incur additional fuel usage or some slowdown due to that increased pressure on your engine. That's simply the way the game works. You're going to move around the pylons, um, you're going to move around back to the finish line, and the nice thing about this game is it's very flexible. If you don't have a lot of time, you want to just play one lap, you'll play one lap, or you can go out as many as you like. There's a fuel limitation for each lap that you run. That will be, de will be determining what uh, you're going to do as you go along. If you're running out of fuel, obviously, you're going to want to go a little slower. Okay. Yeah, uh, looking at the board here, I noticed you've got some different uh, colored, uh, I guess, starting points for the pylons, perhaps. What, right. what do those differentiate? So the difference is that we have really three courses. We have a red course, which is an oval, almost like a regular racetrack. We have a blue course. There are two more pylons at the other end, which is just a little bit wider oval. That's the biggest course. And then we also offer um, a three pylon course, which is green. And the green course is a little more difficult. It's the smallest course on the uh, racetrack, but there are very few straight sections, so you do have to be able to maneuver right, left, slip, turn, all of those things to get around the course. Okay. You get your random event card. Six. Did I get a random card? Five or six. I wrote a... Yeah, six, right? I wrote a, I wrote a five. Well, you're right. I'm sorry. This is awesome. Okay, so how do the dice come into play? Well, you have two dice for each player, and generally we try to do is match them up, red to the red airplane, and so on. During the course of the game, you will only use your six-sided die to break ties. The important die is the ten-sided one. And what you do is you'll roll that at the beginning of your turn. That number will determine the order of play. So the person who rolls the highest number, and in this case I rolled a number nine, um, zero on the die is a ten. The highest number moves first, lowest move number moves last, so you go through that progression of nine, eight, seven, six, and so on. Um, that's, just, that's the way we do the progression as far as who moves in the turn. Uh, and, and it's as simple as that. This game is set up to be a four-player game. It can be played by as, with as many as nine air, air racers. Um, but initially, it's a four-player game. We found four to six seems to be a good number for a fast race and, uh, and a lot of fun. So the dice themselves, it's not a roll and movement game, the dice themselves just kind of determine the order, so the players themselves can determine how far they want to move based on the fuel expenditure? Fuel expenditure in their cards. So as an example, if you were to draw a six, you're going to move six hexes in this turn. If you want to take the chance of expending more fuel, you would then move your full throttle gauge up one, you would get to move seven instead. So a simple move would be, for the red airplane starting here, would, would be one, two, three, four, five, six, and that would be the move. You, you turn every two hexes, you move forward. You can slip, which is just simply a half move to the side. This would be a slip. up to four, I could be next to you. Which I think is one. Or you could swing out one. Are the planes a generic design, or are there actually different types that you that you can fly for different speeds and, and things like that? No, the, the, the planes are all generic as far as their capabilities. All the planes are the same, but um, we do, uh, it, when we're at conventions and tournaments like this, we will try to use a, a, a model airplane that we have. It's a, it's a lead casting airplane that's been hand painted. Uh, and in those cases, we do have several different models we use. P-51s, Hawker C, Furies, um, Grumman F-9s, those were all airplanes that were used in, air, and are still used in air racing. So those are options that people can have if they if they want to go beyond just these plastic P-51s. Okay, so what's the general playing time for a uh, typical game? A typical game depends obviously on, which, obviously on which course you want to run, but the red course, which is the middle-sized course, if you have 
beginners, a uh, one lap race for them will run about 45 to 50 minutes. Uh, to go two laps, they're probably going about an hour and a half. Once you have uh, a little bit of the game under your belt, uh, you can run a one lap race on that course in about 40 minutes and a two lap race in just about an hour, or maybe a little bit over. The idea behind this was simply to keep the game quick and fun, uh, make it easy to learn, make it easy to play, uh, and make it something that people could get together and, and you know play in a brief period of time, play two or three games if they've got the time, and, and have a good time with it. You know, it's unique because you have the miniatures and it's a racing game, and, and most games that have miniatures are typically war games or, or involve some sort of combat. What made you decide to go with a miniature and, and for just a racing game rather than a cardboard counter? I've seen a lot of air games, war games, and other types of games where they use a cardboard counter and it's flat on a board. It's difficult to tell uh, where the airplanes are and it doesn't give you that vision that you're, you're actually flying. So when we put this game together, we decided that using a miniature, using something that would give you that height off the board and give you an opportunity to mark the altitude on the, the piece itself would, would enhance the game, make it a little more playable, make it a little more fun. It's definitely an attractive game. And as far as scaling it up to the nine players, say it comes the base game comes with four, is that something that they would be able to buy in addition to, or would they? Yes, once this game is, is available, we will offer through our website additional aircraft, additional, you can buy additional planes, there will be additional models. Oh, you're two, aren't you? Yeah, I'm just going to go, we'll go six and I'll pull four you're up. All right, so I know it's a convention. It's here at CincyCon 2015, and while you're running the demo games, uh, promoting the, the new game that's coming out, you're also doing a tournament. Explain a little bit about the tournament that you're doing here. Well, the way the tournament works is all day today we've been doing open racing. Uh, people can come and go as they please. They can race in one game. They can race in as many as they like. They're awarded ports, uh, points uh, depending on how they have finished in the race. Uh, and then what we did was we selected the top 12 racers at the end of the day. Those people ran a semi-final race. And behind me right now, uh, they're running the final race, the final six racers. Those six racers will be racing for some prizes. Uh, but in addition to that, we're offering a trophy for second and third place. Uh, and that's what the trophies are doing here today. So, again, we tried to make this a very fun activity. We wanted people to be able to participate, have a good time, and, and win something at the end. And I've noticed that, you know, throughout the convention that you've ha had a couple of games going at all times, which is good. You're getting a lot of foot traffic. I've noticed people ranging in ages from, you know, 10, 11 years old on up to, uh, you know, 99 or whatever. And... Uh, it, which is great because it does look like a good family game you, and it, it looks very popular and even while we were recording earlier I heard the laughter from the table behind us which is always a good sign for a game so congratulations it looks like you uh, you have a good product here and I look forward to seeing it on Kickstarter what's your anticipated uh, Kickstarter release time we should have it on Kickstarter sometime within about the next six to eight weeks okay and any idea what you're starting uh, uh, goals are going to be or any stretch goals that you can kind of whet our appetite with or what we might see? Uh, I have not just, I have not come up with any kind of uh, kind of actual uh, goals but we will have several stretch goals. Uh, those stretch goals will involve some things you can't get anywhere else. Uh, there'll be special airplanes, um, autograph sets of the, of the rules. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll come up with some things that I think people will be very happy with. Okay, and not trying to twist your arm, but I, I know in the game over there you had some different planes uh, that were painted up the, the, that obviously aren't going to be part of the base game. Any chance that maybe any of those will be some part of the stretch goals? There's a possibility for that too. Either uh, those planes are actually sold as a bare uh, metal product. Uh, they're all hand painted. Uh, so there's a possibility there could be some stretch goals involving hand pla painted planes or at least the metal planes. The metal planes will also be something that will be an option once the site is up and running and the game is available. If you want to convert to metal from the racers that come with the game, that will be something you can do through the website. Excellent. Well, when you sell 100,000 copies, I guess you'll be busy painting all night long to, to get those stretch goals out. But again, it, it, it's a very unique game. It's definitely something different. I don't think I've seen a, a board game that's an air racing game that has the miniatures and um, 
I, I look forward to, to seeing your uh, seeing your success and and seeing the final product and putting it on the table for my own family. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you, Nick. So, Nick, do you have a, a website where uh, people can follow the progress of it before it gets on Kickstarter and and see uh, see what's going on? Yeah, we do. The website is www. FullThrottleAirRacing.com. We also have a Facebook page. It is Facebook.com slash FullThrottleAirRacing. Okay, I'm sitting here with Jordy and Karen, the first and third place winners of the Full Throttle Air Racing Game Tournament. Uh, why don't you guys give me uh, give me some insight. How was the game? How did it play? How fun it was? Let me know. The game's absolutely amazing. Uh, I sat down, I was already interested in reading the description of it today. I sat down to play one game. It is quick to learn, it is easy to pick up, it's absolutely fun to play. Uh, got a lot of conventions, it's not very often I find a game where I will sit down at 10 a.m. and play it until 8 p.m. at night and have a great time every time. Uh, also, this is my sister, uh, so she doesn't even hardly war game. Not only that, but the fact that we can sit down together all day and sit and play a game like this. I've got a son that's about to be seven. He could pick this up in five minutes and play just as easy and just have a blast. Just sit around, you can play a game in 30 minutes while dinner's cooking and just have a great time. I absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it. I can't wait for him to hopefully get it kick-started, come out. I will be picking up a copy just as soon as I can. Awesome. Hey, I, I know you said uh, you use the term war game. Are you primarily a war gamer in the past? Yeah, I've been a miniatures war gamer my whole life. So I started when I was six. I'm 31 this year. Okay. Well, so since this, I mean, there is no fighting in this game. So being a, a person who's a war gamer, how did this game hold your attention that long with no, no shooting or killing each other? It's, it's just a fast-paced game. The turns move quick. Uh, it keeps you excited. There's so much going on with so many other players in the game that you have to think about what you're doing. There's unexpected random events that happen that throw everything for a loop. Some are good, some are bad. You sit here and try to plan as a racer what you're going to do, and next thing you know, you have a... You're not moving as fast because the card is drawn, and that messes you up. But, oh, you get an extra move you weren't counting on because of a random event that's happened with your plane. And it's just, there's there's so much, there's never a dull, there hasn't been a dull moment this whole day playing okay. this game. So, Karen, you not really a war gamer, are you a board gamer? What What is it that, that was, you know, kind of, that you connected with and made this game so fun? Um, well, I mean, like I said, normally when I come to these kind of conventions with my dad and my brother, I just kind of sit in a corner on my phone. I don't ever play anything. Um, and with this, my brother had already played it, and I I had already, the first time I walked out with my dad today, I had told him, I want to play that. That looks fun. I don't know what it was that caught my eye about it. I don't know if it was the planes or anything, but... I like the fact that it's it's a game that you know Anybody adults can play. can play, kids can play. There's no violence in it. It's suitable for all ages, and I mean, if I can pick it up, anyone can pick it up. <laughs> awesome. Because I'm very slow. <laughs> so I see, uh, yeah, Jordy got first place. You got third place. So once this game gets out on Kickstarter, uh, what you know, I don't know. Maybe you'll back it. Maybe you won't. Uh, sounds like you probably will. Uh, so, uh, so it sounds like there's some bragging rights on the line for a future family game night. Is that, yeah. does that sound like yeah. that's in the yeah. works for you? Well, All, right. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. I hope you enjoyed uh, CincyCon 2015. So I hope you had a chance to take a look at the video and uh, check out the game that's in development by Nick. Again, that's Full, thr full Throttle Air Racing Game. Should be coming to Kickstarter. I personally didn't get a chance to play it. It was very crowded every time I went past, so it seemed like it was getting some good, uh, some good response there. But if you're looking for a racing game that is uh, involves air and has a three-dimensional aspect to it because of the miniatures, uh, it might be something you might want to check out. It's not a war game and it's not a heavy game. So if you're looking for a family, fun, interactive, social experience. Uh, that has a little bit of cutthroat uh, aspect to it, check out this game. All right. Again, uh, we ask you that if you uh, enjoy the videos and you want to see more of them, subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. All the information is below. And uh, take care and have a great uh, weekend. Thanks.